Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you a game that I just finished playing and I felt as if this was my best ever middle game play in chess. Of course, it's up to you to define if you like it or not, but I loved it for sure. So let's let me take you through this game, uh, which I enjoyed to the core. I started off with d4, open response with c6. I went with bishop to f4, trying to play the London system kind of setup. Open plays uh, d6. I went with c3, trying to solidify the center. Uh, and then open plays g6, trying to free and get the bishop uh, from g7. Maybe you can get the knight out on f6 and castle on the king side. I respond with knight f3, trying to develop my minor pieces. Open goes with bishop g7. I play e3. And now knight f6, as expected. Here I went with h4. Now, generally, the idea is to develop the bishop early. Uh, and then the knight on to d2. You can put your queen on uh, c2. Uh, and then castle on the king side or queen side, dependent from where you want to attack. I prefer attacking from the king side because uh, it's it's always important to identify what your opponent is doing. Here my opponent uh, just took out the minor pieces on the king side, nothing from the queen side. So most likely the opponent will cast on the king side. And since we know opponent's plan, why not attack early? So I went with h4, uh, opponent plays h5, h4 generally meets up with h5. Uh, I now develop the bishop to d3. Uh, open goes with a bishop to g4, trying to pin the knight. Here I chose to get my queen onto b3. Now, this is a simple uh, funder that I got to know that uh, whenever a bishop comes out uh, early, uh, what that means is your uh, b7 is not defended anymore. So I thought, let me go with the queen there uh, onto b3, attacking the b7 instead. Here my open plays a uh, queen to b6, which is a nice move because opponent is willing to exchange queens uh, and that's always good for black uh, because generally white is the one taking the initiative as it, white plays the first move. Uh, so it's an important way that opponent can exchange queens. Uh, here I thought, uh, let me just try to uh, bluff my opponent and play a knight to be uh, uh, d2 first trying to connect both my knights so that if now my opponent does take with the bishop the knight with the bishop i can take back with the knight my pawn structure will not be ruined up uh, so I, I, in the process i develop my knight as well which also defends my queen so if now my opponent takes i don't have to spoil my pawn structure also so i'm pretty good in this situation here my opponent develops another piece knight to d7 with the same idea uh, that it can now take back if i take the queen it can take back with the knight here I go with a knight to g5, forcing a queen exchange because I am attacking this pawn with a couple of pieces, which would be dangerous if I get to take it. So opponent decides to trade off the queens. And now I took with the pawn so that my opponent's rook will be tied up to this pawn uh, on a7 because my rook is always attacking this uh, pawn, which is a weakness now. So opponent will have to babysit this pawn maybe with the rook or play it forward uh, sometime. And I'm okay with this position because... I can still castle either side of the board. Uh, of course, bishop is there as of now, and I have to kick it backwards. But there's, there's a good chance I can castle either side of the board. Open castle on the king side, uh, which as you see, as soon as the open castles, the advantage goes way more uh, to the white pieces. White side, it's now 2.2 in the engine evaluation. Here, I just tried to kick the bishop backwards by playing f3. There's no dark square weakness now because the bishop is in the bad place, not doing anything, just standing in front of a beautiful pawn chain already. So the bishop would be inactive for most uh, time of this game. I've enjoyed that situation. So I just tried to kick the light square bishop as well backwards. Uh, but opened counterattack with e5, trying to hit my bishop. So I thought, okay, let me first take the pawn, which opened does take back. And now I slide my bishop backwards on to g3. Uh, h2 or g3 was my choice. I went with uh, g3 because I just want to put my bishop backwards on. Maybe f2 later on if I'm preparing to castle. That's also nice. Uh, so it's a decent position to have. Open has to save the bishop backwards. So bishop to f5 allows me to play e4 as well. So uh, if you notice here, open is just moving the bishop again and again. Rather should have just kept the bishop backwards in one go. Uh, not allowing me to push my pawns forward as well, which gave me some time to, you know, free up the space and then 
gain more space in the center. It's always nice to have uh, space control. Up and goes with bishop backwards now to e6. Now I can take the, with this with the knight uh, and remove the bishop pair for the opponent, but that opens up the f file after pawn takes. And yes, it's defended. The pawn is quite defended right now. I can simply put my king also in f2, but I didn't want to open up the f file straight away. So I rather thought, okay, let me exchange the bishop. Uh, I'll be happy because. I'll take with this knight, with the knight, and then I'll be attacking the center pawn with a couple of my pieces and can be tough to defend. Here open takes, I take back with the knight, and now the idea is to take the center pawn. Uh, open defends it with the rook, but here comes a knight to d6 attacking the rook. Now uh, rook has to come up and defend the pawn, uh, and which allows uh, me to take on b7. And I got an extra pawn here. Uh, Open tries to attack me with the rook now. And now knight comes back to a5. Yes, uh, I can come back onto uh, d6 as well. But what allows is that Open can take the uh, pawn on b3. And suddenly I'll see that b2 is also weakened up. I don't want to go into that situation. So when you are in control, why not just uh, strengthen your uh, pieces? So I just went with knight to a5, uh, defending the pawn as well with the knight now rook to b6 my opponent maybe trying to put the rook here and then pinning the knight temporarily because my king is in castled i went with b4 first trying to make sure that my knight is always defended uh and then open goes back with the knight uh feeling the pressure that uh of this knight standing here maybe trying to play pawn forward next uh i went with bishop backwards now to f2 attacking this rook so the rook has to move and rook cannot go backwards because otherwise uh, up this pawn falls. And if rook goes miserably bad onto b8, then it's a fork because knight takes will attack both the rooks. And open can only save one and basically even resign, can resign as well. So rook goes to a6. And here I play, I, I castle here. Uh, yes, it's too late to castle, but uh, look at the position I am in. So it doesn't matter what open is doing. Uh, it's fully controlled from every places. Uh, my bishop is pretty active and on this diagonal. I can put my bishop here as well eventually. Uh, I can get my rook on the open file. My knight is already defended. I can get the other rook also if required. Uh, my knight can has an escape square, so pawn forward doesn't scare me. So it's a good situation to be in. Uh, open goes back with the knight to b8, trying to defend the pawn because uh, doesn't want to maybe babysit it. And I thought I'll just clarify the situation by placing knight to cf c4, asking for a rook exchange. So open can take here, open does take, I take back. And now again, I'm, I'm attacking a pawn and that's only defended with a rook. So open thought, okay, let me just push it, a6. Now I cannot take because knight is here, but then that means that knight will have to be here forever to defend this pawn. Because if it moves forward, of course I can take with a couple of things. Uh, or actually third thing as well. <laughs> so this pawn is going to be a vulnerability. Opponent will have to always babysit it with the knight. And here I thought, let me improve the pieces, uh, my, uh, my uh, piece, uh, what am I saying? Let me improve my bishop's uh, square there, put it to more activity. So I put it on uh, c5, trying to attack the rook as well. Uh, the bishop is defended nicely with the pawn as two. Uh, two. So here rook comes to d7. And now I started moving my king towards center because open definitely cannot come to d2 uh, because my knight is controlling the square. And eventually I'll get my rook onto d1 and exchange the rooks as well because my position is pretty solid. I can uh, capture uh, more pawns here somehow and then win this end game quite easy. Open goes back with the bishop onto f8, which was again bad because allows me to take the bishop, which open can take, of course, with the king. But then the center pawn falls. Uh, oh, I didn't take it. Okay, I took it, I think, later on. So I placed king on e2. Uh, open goes with a knight to c7. And now I take the pawn, which open now has to defend the rook. So rook comes on to e7. And now I have to be careful because uh, this pawn forward can trap both my knights as well. Also, uh, my knight on e5 is attacked right now. And I cannot capture the pawn because rook defends it. So I got back with, uh, on to c4. Uh, just I thought this the square was much better than going on to d3, d3 and it gives me access to uh, c4. But uh, knight on c4 already uh, uh, gives me access to a lot of squares, which can be healthy uh, to put my knight on later uh, in later in the game. Open now plays pawn forward f6. Knight has to go back, so knight h3 and now knight to b5 by opponent. And here I place my knight back to f2, trying to maneuver my knight better. 
uh, often plays pawn forward f5 i can push the pawn or i thought let me just push my king up a king in the center is much better in the end game let me use my king further to my advantage now notice the weakness in the open structure a i have got extra pawn b open has a knight which is inactive which is only babysitting this pawn and now I, now is the time to get my rook also on the open file open plays uh, king to f7 uh, i first went with g3 so that there's no uh, threats of any pawn pushes uh, on the king side open plays king to f6 and now i thought king to d3 is also nice just trying to remove this pin open tries to attack uh, and then i slide back on the same place now what i did here is i was trying to make sure that now after i place rook onto d1 uh, it would be a kind of a force exchange opponent will take because otherwise lose the control of the open file. Uh, here opponent goes with knight to d6 which was the final mistake of the game I think because now I can push the pawn forward. Opponent has to save the king of course it's check uh, which is and the pawn is defended with the knight thanks to knight being on c4. I took on the knight and now here in this situation opponent resigns because there's nothing much the opponent can do if opponent takes I can of course take back. If open plays pawn forward, which is the best move, I can still take with the king or the pawn, either is fine. And then suddenly my rook comes into the picture and I'll be dominating this game from there on. I have extra piece, extra pawn, 10.2 uh, advantage as per computer uh, engine analysis as well. So, yeah, a, go a very good solid gameplay. I will just do the computer analysis as well. Uh, I just finished this game playing, so I thought I'll record it first and then see how it goes. But yeah, it was complete uh, domination is what I felt. I was never in trouble, uh, at least as per what I felt. And let's see what computer has to say about the situation. So yeah, it looks completely in my favor most cases. Hardly, I think, opponent got a sneak in uh, of minus 0.3, which is nothing. So average centi pawn loss of 25 as well. One blunder as per the computer, which was to put my bishop there for exchange but that was also a tactical move because I wanted my knight to be on c4 and take advantage of this weak pawn structure uh, with my knight so that, that was a tactical move only uh, so yeah pretty much dominating from the beginning and I enjoyed this this was solid gameplay uh, in the middle I hope there was something to be taken as a learning and I hope this improves the chess as well thanks for watching uh, stay tuned to the channel please do subscribe if you haven't already by now uh, press on the bell icon too so that you get notified every time I put a video which is basically daily I do put up a video without a miss so I hope you uh, you're liking the videos do let me know your feedback keep watching and sharing um, th thanks for watching thank you so much for your time take care bye bye